So we're talking about entropy, uh, and so now let's look at entropy of ideal gases. So we have ideal gases, PV equals RT. Uh, so here's some new equations. I didn't really derive these equations. I think we can see where they came from uh, pretty, not, not too bad. Uh, these came from the TDS equations. Let's see. These are from the TDS equations. Let's go back to these. Um, yeah, just not, not too far back here. So, so right here, uh, and the fact that uh, PV equals RT. So now if we're looking at ideal gases, we can say use the ideal gas uh, equation. PV equals RT. So this P over T, uh, we change to R over V. And then we take the integral of 1 over V dV. So that's why we get the ln, a natural log. This V over T... Uh, we, we replace with R over P, and so again, that's where that LN, that's where that natural log, uh, if we're integrating it from 1 to 2, uh, LN V2 minus LN V1 is LN V2 over V1. Uh, all right, so, so anyway, here we go. Here's a new equation. The change in entropy equals the integral of this CV, specific heat, uh, DT over T, plus R ln V2 over V1. If, if we're looking at Vs, the ratio of the Vs, this is uh, lowercase v, but many times it can also be uppercase v um, if we're looking at um, closed systems. Uh, and uh, the second one is if we, are, if we know the ratio of pressures, uh, and this is the integral Cp right there. All right, uh, we're probably not going to want to do this integral, uh, so we have two options. All right, we have two options. If we don't want to do the integral of that specific heat, if we have some really long equation for a specific heat uh, that's changing with temperature, we can just assume constant specific heats. So we'll use C at the average temperature, right? So we'll use C at the average temperature. So again, if we want to find the change in entropy um, using constant specific heats, we take the C at the average temperature times LN of the ratio of the temperatures has to be absolute, right? That needs to be absolute temperatures, uh, plus R, LN, the ratio of the volumes, uh, or if we have the pressures, uh, then we can use Cp um, minus R, LN. There, there was a typo, I think, uh, someone commented in, in my video right here. So that definitely should be a negative right there. Okay, uh, so if we want to find the entropy change, we have two equations, whether we're given volume or whether we're given pressure. Now, uh, if we want, this is per unit mass, all right, this would be uh, kilojoules per kilogram, uh, K, I think, let me uh, think about the units there, uh, this, this would be per kilogram, uh, but if we want it per per unit mole, uh, like for nitrogen, oxygen, CO2, for some of those, uh, all of our equations are not per kilogram, they're per kilomole, uh, then we have this equation right here. All right, the change in entropy, S2 minus S1 per kilomole would be CV bar, uh, ln T2 over T1 plus R, the universal gas constant, ln V2 over V1. Okay. All right. Again, let me reiterate. These are for ideal gases, and we would use these equations if we want to assume, assume constant specific heats, and we'll have this equation if we've got a ratio of volumes, this equation if we've got a ratio of pressures. We would use these if we're looking more at oxygen, nitrogen, where all those equations, all those formulas, all those properties are per kilomole. Uh, we use this one for if we have a ratio of volumes, this one if we have a ratio of pressures. Okay, but for more exact analysis, this integral Cp dt over t is kindly given to us in the property table, at least for air, um, and, and for oxygen, nitrogen, for those in property tables, A17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, so we can replace this term right here with the um, S naught 
from the property tables. So now we have a new equation. The change in entropy would be the original S0 from the original temperature at the property tables. Um, and the, uh, so this air property table is A17. The other property tables would be um, A18, A19, those. Uh, so we could read off the S0 not one, read off the S not two from the original uh, temperatures, uh, minus the R P ln P2 over P1. Um, or, again, if we're, this is for A17, if we're with air, but A18, 19, 20, uh, you notice that those are per kilomole, so we kind of have these S not, uh, I think they may have bars over them, um, but the S nots for the other uh, fluids like oxygen, uh, then those are per kilomole. So, so we'd be finding the S bars, uh, and here we'd have S, I mean, our universal gas constant, ln P2 over P1. Uh, we don't have a, uh, an integral CV dt over t. Uh, the only property tables, the only s naughts in the uh, tables are for cp dt over t. So that's why we always have this uh, pressure, this uh, change in pressure right here. So let me pause and recap. If we have an ideal gas, if we have an ideal gas, now we have two more ways to find the change in entropy. Uh, these equations if we're assuming constant specific heat, this equation, if we want a little bit more exact, right, this would be more exact than constant specific heats, uh, looking up these s naughts in the property tables. Okay, it's a lot of equations. Do you need to write all these equations on your formula sheet? Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, if you do, though, make sure you make a note. This is only for ideal gas, right? These are only for ideal gases. This is constant specific heat. Um, this is variable specific heat. Um, I don't think you need to write both of these equations. Maybe write this equation right here, but know that if you are looking at oxygen, nitrogen, some of those others, then we put we put bars over all of these and, and we change the RU is, I mean, the R is now an RU. So that, that's what I would do if I were you. I would write these first equations, these first equations, but note if I'm looking at, oh, sorry, ah, oh, goodness. I would write these two first equations right here, but note that, hey, if we're looking at oxygen or nitrogen, something that's per kilomole, then we would put bars over all this and change the R to R U. Right, put bars over them, change the R to R U. Okay, now more equations. If we are told it is an isentropic process, if we are told it is an isentropic process, then, uh, and it's in an ideal gas, and we're assuming constant specific heats. Again, I don't, know have, I don't have where these equations come from. But these would come from, now we know the left-hand side of our equation is zero. Right? We know the left-hand side of our equation is zero. We can go back to our TDS equations. And now the DS uh, and the TDS uh, is zero. Also, so we won't derive these, but also given the fact that... R is CP minus CV, and K is CP over CV. All right. All right, anyway. Now, now we have three new equations, but again, we can only use these equations if it is isentropic. So if our process is isentropic, if it is an ideal gas, and if we want to assume constant specific heats. Uh, then here are three new equations where if we know the ratio of temperatures and we know the initial volume, then we can find the final 
volume. If we know the you know ratio of pressures and we know the initial temperature, we can find the final temperature. If we know the you know ratio of volumes and, and the final pressure, we can we find the initial pressure or something like that, right? These equations are for isentropic processes of ideal gas assuming constant specific heats. Now, if we don't want to assume a constant specific heat, there is a process that we can use for variable specific heats. All right, for variable specific heats, uh, you'll notice, and I think we only have this for air, for air table A17, there's a column for relative pressure and relative volume. And we won't go too deep into these. Relative pressure and relative volume are only dependent on temperatures. Only dependent on temperature. Um, and I've got an equation here. Don't Maybe don't worry about this. Is E raised to the S naught over R. I don't have one for V. The, the relative pressure, relative volume. Here we go. The ratio of the relative pressures for isentropic processes, ideal gas, various specific heats, the ratio of the relative pressures is equal to the ratio of the pressures. <clears throat> the ratio of the relative volumes is equal to the ratio of the volumes. Okay, so how can we use that? Here's what we do. Here's what we do. So let's say to use these. To use these up here. Uh, we have to know the T1. So if we know the T1, then from table A17, uh, we can get the relative pressure. We can't get the pressure, but we can get the relative pressure. And if we know the ratio of the pressures, then we also know the ratio of the relative pressures. So if we know PR1, right, then we can, we can get calculate PR2, knowing the ratio of the pressures, the initial pressure and the final pressure, uh, the, we can get relative pressure too, and from that, read off the chart to get T2, okay? Okay, let, let's do that again. What if we know T1? Uh, maybe we could go to table A17 and get VR1. And if we know the ratio of the volumes, then we know the ratio of the relative volumes. Um, so if we know VR1 then, and the ratio, then we can get calculate VR2. And then it's just dependent on pressure. Go back to the table. Read off T2 from the table. Okay, okay so do you see the second half of this notes? Starting from here, down. This is for isentropic. This is for isentropic. We can use these these um, these equations right here, or we can we can use this process right here, knowing the temperature, reading off the property, the relative property, calculating the second relative property, reading back off the property table to get the second temperature. Right again for isentropic processes. If the equation is asking you for the change in entropy then it's not isentropic, right? The change in entropy for an isentropic process is zero. So do not use these equations right here to find the change in entropy, right? Use these equations right here to find the change in entropy. Use the second half of these notes if it's isentropic. And again, this is, this is all, this section is all for an ideal gas. Okay, hopefully this will make more sense. I don't know if you, when we when we do the problems, it, and and some of this I I don't even the I skim over what this all means, and I just make sure I can understand how to use and when to use these equations to either find the entropy change, or if we know the entropy change is zero, if we know it's isentropic, then we can find the final temperature, uh, the final volume, something like that. All right, so let's practice. Uh, by working out some problems.